Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to be talking all things favicons. What they are, how we use them and of course how to create them ourselves. So let's head onto the computer now and get started. Okay, so first of all, what is a favicon? Uh, well, apparently the name favicon originated from the words favourite icon, but you do pronounce it favicon, not favicon or favicon, as some people will say. But essentially what they are is a small icon that is used online. So on your web page, for example, these are the little icons we can see up in our tabs of our web browser. So they may seem pretty insignificant at a glance and it's something that's very easy to overlook as a designer or even as a business owner, but actually they are so crucial, especially when you have a lot of tabs open, for example. So you can see here, I've got some big name websites open and each of the icons is obviously very recognizable because of who they are. Now, if I had even more tabs open, having those favicons there that are really recognizable it's going to make it much easier for a user to go back and find your website in that situation. It also adds brand consistency so you really want to be thinking about user interface even with small elements like this when a user is on your website. I've seen quite a few designers that will have built a website on a platform like Wix and they still have the default Wix favicon on their website and it looks really unprofessional if you have this. Adding your own custom favicon to your own portfolio website for example is a really good idea and it's really going to add to the consistency of your branding. Now they don't only feature in these tabs as you can see I have some bookmarks set up along here if I go into my bookmarks menu as well this is the same thing here if I go into fonts all of these icons are favicons. They can also feature in other areas like when you open new tabs up you may see a slightly bigger version on mobile. If you do a Google search, you will see the favicons as part of the results. And you can even do things like save an app icon to a web page on your iPhone, for example, and that is also going to utilize a favicon. Now, if I jump over to Safari, we've got the exact same pages up here and you can see the favicons are the same for the most part. However, you can see now that the YouTube favicon, for example, has this white box around it and the Nike favicon isn't actually appearing, it's just a gray N, which I believe is the default for Safari. So I'm not sure what's going on there with those websites in particular. If I go back to Chrome, you can see that the YouTube icon on Chrome doesn't have a white box, it's just the red play icon with a transparent background and the Nike favicon has a black box with the Nike swoosh logo in it. If we go over to Firefox, it's the same thing here. The favicons are staying consistent, the exact same as how they appear on Chrome. I've also got my own personal portfolio website here, just as an example to show you my favicon. And I'll take you into my logo design file to show you a little bit more on that as well later on. Now, one thing to note with favicons is that it is very much dependent on whether you are using an online web website builder like WordPress or Squarespace for example, or if you're actually developing it yourself or using a developer to build the website from scratch. There are actually a number of files needed for a favicon because of the different ways in which they're displayed. Now luckily we have an Illustrator template file set up and ready for you to use. You can download it for free from the description below if you'd like, and this is going to have everything you need for setting up and exporting your own favicons. If you if you are doing it yourself or you're using a developer, there's also a very useful article from Evil Martians which outlines their workflow and what they use for creating favicons in 2021. They've really simplified what's necessary, they've even supplied code for that side of the process as well and the files you'll need. But like I say, we have this template file that already has artboard set up at the sizes for the files they mention in that article as well. So using them together is going to be really helpful. Now if I just quickly jump over to my logo design file here, this has all of the different versions of my logos. It's a responsive logo. If you don't know what a responsive logo is, I can cover that in another video. Let me know in the comments down below. But 
Essentially, the logos over on the left-hand side here is my core logo. This is the full logo, and this is what I aim to use where possible. Now, if I was to shrink this down to the size of a website browser favicon, which is usually about 16 by 16 pixels, so absolutely tiny, it's just not going to be legible in any way. It's just going to look like a total mess. So if I scale this right down, for example, you know, that's not far off the size it would need to be, and you can see it's just completely illegible. So that's where you want to think about trying to create something that's really simple and is going to render properly at that size. So you can see here I've got some more simplified icons and right over on the right hand side is the favicon design I'm using currently. So going from that full logo where we have a lot more going on, we have text, it's a lot larger, simplifying it down into something really very simple is going to really help. Now if I jump back over to our template file, we have a layer within here that just says examples just to show you this in a bit more detail. So this is just a fictitious logo here, Frankie's Bistro, and what I've done is just taken a core element from the logo, just that first letter F, that's all you need for something like a favicon, again because it's going to be displayed so small, and I've utilised the brand colours so we're maintaining that visual identity but this is going to render a lot better at that smaller size. Now you'll also notice that we have some accompanying text here, and like I was saying if you're using a website builder the process is generally a lot easier. Now this may not be the case for all website builders, please note that I'm more referring to things like WordPress and Squarespace whereby you can simply upload one image file and it's going to convert it all for you and show the correct favicon for the correct situation. So WordPress for example states that you are meant to upload a 512 by 512 pixel image and so that's what this first artboard is set up at. If I take off my examples layer, we also have a safe area, this slightly lighter grey, and that's because certain web browsers tend to automatically round the corners. So this safe area is just for your foreground elements like the F here. I'm making sure that that's not going to go beyond that, otherwise there's a chance that it might get cut off by those rounded corners. This is the same throughout all of these as well. If I turn off the examples layer once more, we have small safe areas within these artboards as well, just for the foreground elements. So I'd highly recommend really refining the design of the logo down for something like a favicon, only using a letter or a very simplified icon. If you're using an icon with a lot of detail, just remember that that detail is going to get lost and potentially have a negative impact on how it looks down at these smaller sizes. So it's crucial that you keep it simple, but try to maintain that visual identity as best you can. So you can see we have different sizes for the different areas Areas that a favicon may appear. So as I was saying, Apple Touch is where you can save your website as an app icon on your home screen, for example. This needs to be a slightly bigger, 180 by 180 pixels. Again, this is going to automatically round the corners, so we have a safe area. And we have a few more of these for Android as well. And you're fine to just export these as a PNG in most cases, unless your developer tells you otherwise. The only other thing to note is that with most browsers, you can simply use an SVG file. However, it's also good to have a backup .ico file. So this used to be the go-to file for favicons. It's since changed a little bit with advancements in code, but it's still good to have that for certain browsers in case they can't properly load the SVG file, for example. So what you would do in that situation is just export it as a PNG or a JPEG and use an online converter. I'm not going to recommend any particular converter, simply Google image to ICO for example and you're going to get a ton of different options to use. So the last point I'd like to make is that you should always consider favicons when you're designing logos for your clients. Like I say it's something that's very easy to overlook but if you're to create a suite of logo options for a client always include a very simple version of that that can be used as a favicon. You don't have to send them all of these different files that we have in in this design template. Just one will do so that they have that as an option and if they need these more specific files they can always come back to you. But it's definitely an important thing to think about from a design point of view as it's a crucial part of any website. But that rounds up our overview of favicons and how you can create them yourselves. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video then give it a like and subscribe for more design related content. And if you're interested in learning more about logo design, more specifically how 
able to create consistently professional looking logos for your clients, we're currently running a free workshop where we detail our entire process that we and members of our full Graphic Designer Pro course have used with huge success for years now. Simply click the link in the description below for more information and sign up now. I'll see you there.